Having been scammed in July last year, a well-meaning friend, knowing I was lonely and liked chatting to people, suggested I try Instagram. The first two weeks were great. Many of my Facebook friends and family were on there, and I was really enjoying it. It was then that I began to get follow requests from people I didn't know, and just like chatting to anyone. So I thought, oh well, where's the harm? If I don't look at all of these, I'll never know. And after all, they can't all be fakes. Little did I know, I engaged with a couple of them and began conversations. I caught on pretty fast that they were scammers. I played along, thinking if I keep them occupied that they're not scamming some poor unsuspecting victim. The first one, Christopher Morgan, literally changed his name overnight and became David B. Samadhi. I know now he did this as the original profile was most likely reported and deleted. I googled Samadhi and discovered a very affluent and ever popular doctor working out of New York earning about $7 million a year. I continued to play along until giving money for this, his vacation certificate became the most important thing in, quote, our relationship. And then I called him out. It took a while for him to confess. And thereafter, a short while, where we ceased contact, but eventually, after he had formed his plan, he came back. He explained he was scamming, and he needed money for his mother's medical bills. Had me a brief outline of his life story and apologized, promising to never scam again. Initially, he tried to persuade me that we could still carry on a romantic relationship, but after learning that this kid was only 21 years old, I put a stop to that. We chatted about all manners of things. He was very bright, knowledgeable, and seemed to have a very old head on his very young shoulders. I then made a huge mistake. Despite all the warnings and all the information put out there, I sent him 50 pounds for his birthday. I lied to the Western Union office when they asked me if I knew him and it upset me to see how happy he was to get this small gift. Very shortly after this, he was asked to leave the house he lived in as he refused to scam anymore and so began his life on the streets. We spoke for almost a year. There were many highs and lows. I sent him more money, a hundred pounds for Christmas and another small sum just after. In February he made a strange request. He had a friend who knew a lady like me and she wanted to send money but she was in California and Western Union wouldn't allow her to send to Nigeria. Would I be willing to receive the money from her and then forward it to him? Right away alarm bells rang and I told him I felt awkward about doing this. It was forgotten for a couple of weeks and then one morning I woke to him telling me the money was waiting for me to collect at the outlet I usually sent him money from. In a panic, and without thinking too much of what I was doing, I set to pick up the money, and oh boy, what a mess I've made. I had the MTCN number, but had no idea of the sender's name or the amount I was receiving. I felt so stupid. I got the details from my contact, collected the money, and tried to forward it to the receiver he had sent me. And of course, it was not allowed. Next, I tried to return it to the original owner, but I would have ended up spending 140 pounds out of pocket to do this because of the exchange rate and the taxes, so I put the money in my purse and went home to think. We had many arguments over this money. I now believe it was from him, not a friend. Anyway, after a week, he started getting quite nasty and demanding that I had enough, so I went to MoneyGram outlet, took a deep breath, and thank God the money was on its way to Nigeria, and I had become a money mule. We carried on talking for a few more months. He was always cold, starving, wet. Around July, he began telling me he was unwell. At first, his symptoms seemed to be caused by malnutrition. I felt bad, but I didn't think it was a good idea to keep sending him money, and also was beginning to feel like he was scamming me. 
He went on and on about these symptoms. And then, out of the blue, he said I had to send him money to get to hospital for tests, or he would report me to the authorities for the Money Mule episode and contact my family to inform them of my activities concerning our friendship. To start off, he wanted a thousand pounds. He was extremely nasty and menacing, and eventually scared me so much I sent him 200 pounds. Within a few days, I received a hospital document detailing his condition. It said he had end-stage kidney disease, outlined the treatment he would need and its cost. I checked out the hospital, and yes, it existed, but after showing the document to some of my friends, they all agreed it was fake. I got some really good advice from friends and support groups. Report and block everywhere. I shouldn't have heeded this advice in the beginning. I knew the score. I had spoken to him on Messenger, Hangouts, and WhatsApp. I blocked him everywhere, changed my phone number, and he still had my email address. Thankfully, the last contact I had with him was a month ago, so now I'm hoping he's gone. I know for a fact he still scams. I met a lady who he tried it with, and she sent me screenshots. I have many photos of him and documents. I think I've covered it all. Thank you for letting me tell my story. I would like to tell my story. I met a scammer on Facebook in March of 2018. First two months thought he was a captain of an oil rig and that he was using the pictures of a real captain. The poor man is everywhere. Then, the first six weeks of writing we decided to call each other. His voice did not match, so my gut said to check things out. I googled the pictures and it took no time to know it was not him I'd been communicating with, and I called him out on it. I knew he wasn't the captain he said he was. He then confessed who he really was, told me he should have not have told me who he really was, but we continued to write and talk every day, and we still do as I write this. About eight weeks later, he told me about where he lives, and that is where he works. He works for someone in return, as this guy gave him a place to stay, food, and a small amount of money. He told me he had went to Pakistan from Nigeria with his brother for work, but when they got there, it was not true, and they had no way back home, no money, and on the streets, when they met this guy who gave them a job, and that is how he started scamming. His brother is still in Pakistan trying to get back to Nigeria. I used to try and track him. I do love him. But don't trust that he's not scamming anymore, as he says. I have more to say, and I'd like to finish my story and remain anonymous. He's been a good friend. We talk daily a few times. I've sent money in the last five months, a total of $600 for food and room where he stays now. I really wish I knew if he was truly playing me. I've asked often, and he's very open with me. Anything I ask, he will tell me. He has sent pictures, we video chat, daily. After I found out about his real identity, a couple of weeks later, the guy said he was working and told him to stop all communication with me. And he did for a week, but then called me from an outside phone. But somehow the guy found out and he was very mad and left the house as he'd been hiding from this guy trying to get money for doing computer work for people to get money for an airline ticket back to Nigeria. He has never asked for money from me. I had volunteered and sent it to him for food and room charges. He is really scared for his life because this man has sent other people looking for him and has threatened his life. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm not the trusting type and he sounds like he's telling me the truth. He does not have any social media pages anywhere. He has a very old Instagram account. He has asked me to contact two of his brothers for help. I've investigated for any information, but have found nothing. He said if it wasn't for my support, he would have been done with his life. When I first met him, he went by Jenkins Heinrich. Also on Hangout, he still uses that name. I do not have his phone number or photos of him, but I do believe that I keep my guard up because of everything I've learned. 
He has never asked for information of my bank account or my cell phone number. One thing, it seems weird, is when I have sent money, I sent it to an agent in Nigeria, but in his name. Then the agent sent it to Pakistan. He has helped me to leave a very unhealthy relationship that I probably will still be in. But again, I have my guard up and continue to check for anything that might involve him. He has mentioned he would like to come to the USA to see me, but money and getting his papers could take some time. But he said he will make it happen. So I have so many mixed emotions. We do click very well. I can tell him anything, and he is such a positive support system for me. Honestly, he's changed my life in a positive way with my attitude and outlook. I have told my friends and family about him, and they seemed and agree that I seem a lot happier. My daughter has talked to him a couple times and asked questions, and he's answered all of them, so I'm just not sure. And I'm not on a lot of social media accounts, only Facebook, and I don't have very many friends on there. I have never physically met him, so what do you think? About two months ago, he asked me if I would pick up some money for his friend in return, and we could each make a hundred dollars. So I was like, sure because he's trying to get money for the airline ticket. I was told to go to MoneyGram and pick it up and then send it to him. But when I sent him to the MoneyGram, they denied the transfer and I had to go the next day for a refund. I went to get the refund and he said that he would wait till the following day and send half and then send the other half in two days. Well, that night after I got the refund on the paperwork, the lady who sent it was from Romania. So I called her and asked her who she was sending it to and why. She gave me a different name and said it was for boat repair. I asked her how long she's been talking to this man who was from Texas. I then told her I was sending it to Nigeria and she was shocked. I asked her who she thought I was and she said she thought I was his lawyer and explained far from the truth. We compared notes and how we met. And honestly, it didn't seem to be the same person. So I told her I was going to send the money back to her and I didn't want to be involved. And not 10 minutes after I hung up with her, my phone started blowing up with rings. So I answered and it was the man she was sending the money to, Jenkins. He was threatening me to send it to him. The next morning, I went to send the money back to Romania and I was advised to send half to see if it went through and then send the other half the next day. So I did. Then, I talked to Jenkins, who told me I shouldn't have called that lady. I thought about it, and it was not a good idea. And I told Jenkins his friend called, and he was harassing me. He said to block him and send the rest of the money back. Then, he called his friend. He said to tell him not to contact me ever again. And that he finds out that the lady had already resent money to him. I was like, why did I even put myself in the middle of this? Then, next thing I know, the lady was calling, giving me problems because I made her man angry. So the next day, I sent the rest of the money to Jenkins and told him never to involve me in anything again. He apologized and felt bad. They both were rude and nasty to me. I have since blocked her and the guy. She, in the end, didn't believe anything I tried to tell her about being scammed. She has told me herself in the last... 30 days, she has sent almost $10,000 to him. I was surprised. But then she turned on me, and she was nasty because she believed him and not me. That was the last time I will ever do that again. I physically do not have that kind of money to send to anyone. The money I have sent was to help him eat and for a place to stay. I have sent maybe $100 since this has all happened. I met the man I known as John Jacobs, in October of 2017. He said he was working on an oil rig. He had a small daughter who was at a boarding school in Nigeria. I'm always skeptical when I meet new people online, but he was so romantic and so kind that I found myself falling for him. Fast forward a month later, he had a crisis. His daughter was sick, and he couldn't get off the oil rig to help her or be by her side. I ended up speaking to a medical doctor in Nigeria who was going to do his daughter's surgery. He told me that he needed a thousand dollars 
for the anesthesia and to begin surgery to save her life. She had some kind of infection, although he was very vague about what was wrong. I don't fall for things easily, so I asked him the name of the hospital. I asked for the phone number for the hospital. He gave me both, but when I put the name of the hospital into Google search, it brought up a different phone number than what the doctor gave me. I ended up calling the hospital and asking if this girl was there. The lady I spoke to informed me that it sounded like I was being scammed and that there was no doctor by that name at this hospital as well as no patient. I thanked her for her help and I stopped all contact and before I knew it a few days later I started getting messages both from the doctor and from him. He asked me how I could betray him, betray his dying daughter, that she was laying in a hospital sick and she went on and on and on about all these problems he was having and how I abandoned his child to die and suffer. I confronted him and told him that I contacted the hospital and they said they'd never heard of her, never heard of the doctor, and I knew he was lying. I found one of his photos on a search through Tinai. It belonged to another man and it looked like another fake profile being used, so I knew the photo was stolen. I confronted him on everything I knew. He denied it and denied it. He said he wasn't lying to me. He would prove himself to me. And after we argued back and forth and I told him I would block him, he finally confessed. He told me he was a 23-year-old Nigerian man going to school, that he was very poor. He had no money, no food. He was trying to pay for his education, and the only option he had was to try scamming. He said he'd never scammed before, and had since meeting me, he felt like he could change his life, that he'd fallen in love with me, but he thought that I wouldn't love him because he was an African man. I told him that his skin color never mattered. It was the honesty. It was the long conversations we had, the heartfelt conversations, the private things I told him. I was shocked to find out how old he was. I'm 15 years older than this person. I told him he didn't have to lie. He could be honest. I would have helped him if he would have just been honest. He went on and on confessing his love for me, saying he wanted to be with me. He really thought that things would work out. I started to believe him in some ways, but in other ways I knew that he was so much younger than me and he had lied to me. I could never see myself with him. The only reason, not being his skin color, but because he was a scammer and because he was so much younger. I told him we could never have a relationship. But I would love to be his friend and see him become very successful in his schooling. He said he would never scam again. He told me he was done with that life, that I had changed him. He kept pushing this subject, saying that I had made things better for him. I started to believe him, and then he started asking me for money. At first it was $50 for an iTunes card so he can continue with his phone. Then. He'd ask me for another couple hundred dollars for books. Me, believing him, sent him a few hundred dollars to help him with his schooling, thinking that's where it was going. He even added me on Facebook with his real Facebook page. Although I was surprised because there wasn't a lot of friends, conversations, or photos. Just a few pictures of himself, and that was it. We continued speaking. He told me he'd spent my money on books and a little bit of food. He said that I was making his life better. Pretty soon, he started asking me if I'd be willing to pick up some money that a lady tried to send him for his schooling, but it didn't go through. At first, I questioned who this lady was, and he told me that it was a friend of his aunt's who lived in Germany. I was reluctant at first, but then I thought, well, maybe he is being honest because he did say he had relatives that were living and working in Germany. So I went ahead, and I picked up the money and then forwarded on to him in Nigeria. I did this a few times, but then I started to question things. I had read about money mules and wondered if I was becoming one. So one night, I went on to Facebook and I typed his name and his city into Facebook search and lo and behold, I found his real Facebook profile. He had made a fake profile for me with his real photos but no friends, no interactions, nothing on his timeline. Come to find out, his real Facebook page had hundreds of open photos, 
hundreds of friends that were scammers that worked for Western Union and the Hustle Hard Society. I looked through his open photo album and found hundreds of photos of him holding money, shoes, alcohol, saying he loves to hustle and scam. I was being played by a scammer who told me he would never scam again. My advice to you is if a scammer confesses, just know that the confession is a lie. They weave a tangled web to try and make you believe that you've changed them, you've saved them, you're going to make their life better. The truth is, he was still scamming. He was scamming me as himself and scamming others with fake profiles. Thank you for allowing me to tell my story. I have now blocked him from all social media, and I reported the money transfers to Western Union. And we'd like to thank everyone who submitted their stories of encounters with scammers who uh, confessed. If you've had an encounter with a scammer who confessed who he really was and you'd like to tell your story, you can find us on Facebook under Scamming Scammers Action. We are happy to upload your story for you. You can remain anonymous. And above all, if you do encounter a scammer using a fake profile and he does confess, please do know that the reality is he probably he or she is probably still scamming and they're just using you uh, as a money meal or they're using you to try and get money as themselves. So thanks again for everyone who shared their story. Again, if you need help, our inbox is always open under Scamming Scammers Action on Facebook. We will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.